Well, rhythm is totally not going to work distance learning. Pitch ought to be fine. Now, how many, have, how many are unfamiliar with the design of a piano keyboard? I, does anybody have their hand up? One. Okay. One. Okay, let's look at it then. Take a look. First off, uh, I, have a, I have a big problem with dictionaries and uh, phone books because I really know the alphabet only up to G. A, B, C, D, E, F, G is the musical alphabet, and then it starts over at A. So anything after G, I have to figure out. I have to think about it. Um, <laughs> being a musician has its drawbacks, to be sure. Anyway, uh, the uh, piano keyboard is based on this design right here. Um, notice that there's a, a group, groups of two black notes and three black notes. Two and three. Two and three. That's how you keep your place. Now notice that this one right here is next to a uh, group of two black notes. You see it? And if I go up here to the next one, mark C, it's also right next to a group of two black notes. Now, if you count the the, uh, the steps between the, the one C and the next C, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It comes to eight. And eight, Latin for eight, is octave. Now, octave is a term you should know. Now, there's something else you should know, too. I think I should have put this in the in the presentation more than I did. Let's learn a word. It's interval. By the way, I'm getting into stuff that you're going to be tested on. You should know what an interval is and you should know what an octave is. An interval just means The interval from C to D is a second. The inter interval for uh, Ambrose, would you point at the letters? Yeah, why don't you just play? You just play. Play C D. What, C to D? C D. Can you hear that? Yes. All these can you hear the okay. C D is a second. C D E. That's a third. C D E F. That's a fourth. C, D, E, F, G, that's a fifth. C, D, E, F, G, A, that's a sixth. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, that's a seventh. And C to C is an octave. Can everybody hear that this note Sounds like that note. That th these two notes sound a lot more like the same note than these two notes, for instance. You can tell that those those are two different notes. You could easily mistake this. <laughs> okay, going on. <laughs> Besides, Wesley needs a review of the grand staff. Um, how many know the difference between a treble staff and a bass staff? Okay, the treble staff used to was originally a, a G. It's called a G clef because in the old days it looked like a little G. It so happens that the little circle here is around the line G. That's why it's called the G clef. It's the clef that the treble instruments use. The F clef in the old days looked like this. Something like that. And uh, that's look more like this. Something like that. That's an F, right? So these two dots surround the line F. The mnemonic you remember for the lines on the grand staff where every good boy deserves fudge, the spaces spell face. Uh, the bass clef, good boys do fine always, 
and the spaces are all cows eat grass. Um, you'll probably be tested on something about that. I'll be more specific as we get closer to our first test. It's a couple of weeks away. Okay, uh, here's another way of looking at the grand staff with all the notes. This note, middle C, is not called middle C because it's in the middle of the piano. It's called middle C because it's right between the two staffs, right in the middle. Notice that this one in the bass staff looks just like this one in the treble staff. It's, it's, a, it's a dot with a line through it. Okay, like I, I'm kind of freaked about the, pian the uh, computer messing up, and I also don't want to be boring. So does anybody need me to do anything more with this? Everybody, everybody knows this, right? Anybody doesn't, doesn't know it, go ahead and stop me. Fine, we're good. Okay, good, going on. <laughs> 